get out of the rain. Oh, oh, and we need to... Maybe someone should get Kel, and then we can tell Kel. I can go. I'll go find him. And uh, with that, I think, yeah, Iska will split off from the group and um, probably either check, you know, the stables or she knows where Ool's is now. Yeah. So she'll go looking for Kel. So as you uh, as you were heading down through town, um, you see an interesting sight stepping out of one of the alleyways. Um, It's a tall, slender figure, and they have over their head, actually, it's quite ingenious, really. Uh, It looks like a a stick with a piece of fabric that has been pulled taut across the top of it, and um, waterproof, and uh, seems to be actually keeping them dry as they walk out of one of the alleyways um, as you the light sort of catches them you see uh, fine boots that come up almost to the knee blue uh, well tailored pants and it's interesting it's almost like a a long coat but the lower portions of it are made out of sort of like a um, boiled and cured leather uh, that would sort of protect the legs from the side. Um, very ornately made, so that you sort of have this, what would almost be like a um, formal wear, but also protective armor. As it heads up to the waist and you see more of it, you know, there's nice buttons and rivets. Uh, there is sort of a, a plate that's held in place with um, over their stomach that has ridges on it so that it will do that. But again, it's all sort of put together into one outfit. Um, The blue goes into like a fine yellow shirt that again has intricate sort of connections between it into different leather patches up around uh, going a yoke that goes over their shoulders. Their sleeves though are seem fairly um, just fabric based, Um, but then you know, nice sort of scale shaped gauntlets down to gloved hands. And um, because of the way the umbrella is, you really can't see, you know, the light hasn't uh, hit their face. But as they approach, you see one green eye and one gold eye. As Bati steps up to you and says, Iska, thank goodness you are safe. She looks him dead in the eye and looks around. How many other people are out on the streets right now? Is there anyone around? No, it's raining. You're pretty much alone with Bati in this area. Iska, I am elated to find that you are alive and well. I was distraught once I heard of the malfunction that happened with my hounds. I came as soon as I could to make sure that I could do lend whatever help that I could to you and your friends. A malfunction. The hounds were only meant to bring you back, of course. You know Barrios. You were a commodity. You made him money. Why would he see want you any harm to come to you? You know his world is about business and business first. But my friends, their lives were expendable. There was, they had no orders for anything to friend. They were to separate you and bring you home. We did not even know you were with friends at the time. She takes a deep breath and says, you know, for months I wondered what you kept in that wagon of yours. And I found out. And I got a good look at it, but it wasn't until after I left that I got the closest look of all. And she takes out that hound tongue whip and I think just kind of cracks it to her side. Okay. And just like stands defensively. Iska, I can understand 
how traumatic it must have been for what turned into a deadly encounter for you and your friends. But you saw my other creations if you went in my wagon. My things are meant for beauty and entertainment. The hounds, when they fell, they were hit by some surge. I can't understand it. Apparently there are strange magics that happen on this continent that affected them. My tracking device and he holds out a gem. The stones went white and clear, letting me know that they had engaged their locking mechanism so they could be retrieved, but then turned blood red, and I knew something horrible had happened. Through, the divina through divination, I was able to see the corruption that had taken over the souls of the animals that are inside of the clockwork. My clockworks are meant to be a new housing for animals that have become injured or die. They live a normal life and then pass on, just as any animal would, to then have another soul be placed within it. How they were corrupted, I can't explain it. As an act of good faith, I came to try to help. I saw that they were slain once and then again, and then, as you can see, the stones went dark. I assume they were destroyed utterly, which is for the best. They're dead, and they're staying dead. As they should. As an act of my contrition and good faith with you, I present you this. And he hands you over the contract. Barrios' contract. He goes, I purchased this from Barrios. I purchased your freedom for you as an act of atonement for the trouble this has caused. He did not part with it lightly, but it is the least I can do and hand you Barrios' contract. She hesitates. But eventually, she puts a hand on it. And what did you pay for this? Gold. Like, the, the currency of Barrios. He is all about gold. You know that. She takes the contract and looks at it. Uh, do an inspection check. Excellent. You um, can have advantage since it's the contract that you signed or you believe it to be, yeah. Uh, investigation? Uh, or yeah. is yeah. that? Yeah, because you're investigating. I mean, what are you okay. looking for, I guess? Are you looking to see if it's the real deal or what? Yeah, basically. I... So yeah, it's investigation. All right. How about a gnat? <laughs> It is absolutely the contract that you signed. It was magically sealed with your signature and it is 100% oh, uh, legit. I look him in the eyes and give him a slight nod. Where is Barrios? He was headed north last I saw him, heading on his original path to Stone End for his business there. And you, you finally made it to Sojourns. Yes. What, what now? My path uh, takes me through the vice. I hope to make it before the roads close. I was truly concerned for your safety, Iska. Bati, I knew you and Barrios argued. And I knew you mentioned a name. The Arcanomistica. Will you tell me now, free of a contract, free of any responsibility, what you sought to do with them? Business. They are one of the few organizations with enough gold to pay for my larger and more intricate creations. I know that they are preparing for the Conclave. 
I was hoping that I could provide some kind of exhibit for the kings and queens and the nobles of the realm. That's noble of you. Ah, just business. <laughs> I don't ascribe that I'm doing anything for nobility, just an artist trying to prove their worth. Well, Bati, artist to artist, your work is unrivaled. It's, it's beautiful and amazing. It's stunning, honestly and truly. But never do something like that again, because if I hear of anything like the hounds again, I'm not the same little girl you knew back in that caravan, and I'm not alone anymore. I will put those hounds down. And if I have to, I'll do the same to you. I would count on it, that you would take them any creation that has gone rogue down to save others. And if I am responsible and you feel it necessary to hunt me, I invite you to do so as well. May you be inspired. You as well. And she begins to back away from him, heading in the direction of the blacksmiths, but keeping an eye on him as she does. Not subtly at all, very clearly wanting to make some distance and honestly just get away from the situation. Yep. He uh, walks uh, with his umbrella um, towards over where uh, you would expect wagons to be parked over on the eastern side of town and uh, disappears out of view. As soon as he's out of view, she is going to like find just a little like maybe alley or something just to like get in and kind of put her back against the wall and just let out the hugest sigh and just start breathing heavy. Uh, that was definitely her <laughs> talking a big game and hoping it worked. Uh, but she will definitely recompose herself. Look at the contract again, almost in disbelief put it back in her pocket and continue on 